CES 2024 is wrapping up. It's the final day and we've seen so much amazing content here at CES. But there is one topic we haven't discussed and that is design. And I have just the right guy to talk with me about design and that is John Scamadoris. Hey John. Nico. Good to see you again. How, do, how you doing? It's been a busy week. I want to talk with you about something I know you love and I love as well and it's, it's really design. Because we've seen so many crazy designs at CES, crazy ideas, both immaterial and material. And uh, I know, John, you have been talking with a lot of interesting people about that. Your thoughts? I have. Now, just like you said, CES is mind-blowing. Every time, all the time. What I love are the insights that I pick up from people who do, who practice design. I'm not a designer but I know designers. And it's so insightful to get inside their heads. So I've talked with a bunch of designers and I'd love to share some of their thoughts. Let's start it off with some high level thoughts from Chris Lefteri. Amazing, let's roll the clip. You know, the, the light weighting issue I think is, is a big opportunity because light weighting reduction in material, reduction in transportation costs, all that, uh, but also the it's, you know, I think that as we've spoken many times with your colleagues is, is how do we get value out of, um, you know, CMF value out of recycled content, which needs to be looked at in a very different way because you can't deal with it in the same way as you can with a virgin plastic, right? So right. It, it, it's innovating in that respect because no one wants a muddy piece of garbage that's stuck on their you know, $3,000 VR headset, you know, you want to have something beautiful, but how do you do that <laughs> using a material that's recycled? Uh, you know, we have to adjust our uh, perception of uh, materials. And from a design point of view, you have to reevaluate, uh, you know, how you use, for example, recycled materials or biomaterials or whatever. But <clears throat> I think there is this big trend, uh, which is m making ugly, uh, beautiful, you know, because I, you know, mentioned <laughs> flow marks, right? And flow marks can be beautiful. So generally, I'm looking at, um, you know, the physical world and color materials and trends and how that impacts on plastic moldings with, you know, effects in the plastic and how we build some stories around that. But I think what's interesting is, and particularly at CS, is how the future of that as a, a design discipline is going to evolve into into the virtual space. Uh, and for me, the the big area for this is that uh, that physical thing that separates you from a, a digital world and virtual world which is the screen and it's what's been happening with uh, with display technologies in electronics actually what chris just said about the virtual space takes me right back to what we were discussing with the folks at altair their software actually takes design to the next level from paper if you will from sketching to the computer, but way beyond that, because they're actually simulating a whole bunch of stuff that only uh, AI can make possible. If you can run that clip. Let's take a look. We all remember the, the 2D drawings, right? Time, right? We're in an era of digitalization, so of we're course. taking that, of course, to the next level. It's digital twin technology. It's really digitalization of the whole process. So this is the mimicking. entire process in simulation? It's, yes. It's creating a digital twin of right. a real physical product. Right. So you can help design it, but you can also trace the life of that product and predict any maintenance failures or any issues or improvements that you can bring to your right. product. And this is all within the Altair platform of simulation and design and data. I, I, this is so cool. I, I'm, I I'm just looking at it for the first time and I'm like, wow, okay, I get it. Next time you will see, you go to the barista yeah, and see a coffee machine. Exactly. There is much more than just the little drips of coffee coming from it. Indeed. Yes. Very nice. Yes. Do we have data to create the next generation? Well, yeah. People have been accumulating data and we can bring it in here right. and now to make all of a sudden, the process you, you build, You build a full model. Absolutely. Very nice. Absolutely. All the elements of aesthetics can go into it. Exactly. It's not only about That's the function, other thing I wanted to ask you about. It's all of it, yeah? And this is where the industrial design element come into the perspective, the whys and how, and how do I interact with this product. Mm -hmm. It's as important 
as the function. What we saw at Altair is, is, is pretty amazing because they combine both photorealistic visuals and high fidelity uh, simulation, right. which, is, which is quite amazing. Right. But John, I met, uh, you met some other guys as well. So what I wanted to transition at this point is from maybe uh, high level to kind of focused. Uh, I was talking with David Byron from Sunberg Farrar. Some amazing insights. I'd love it if you can roll that tape. Let's go with David. What is catching your attention? What is, ca what is triggering and firing your imagination during this show? Uh, well, we're here at the Venetian Expo, and I was able to go through this hall yesterday. And uh, so this area is going to have a lot of home products um, and uh, smart medical equipment. So one of the things that you'll see here that we've been talking a lot about is the relationship with the product when you're talking about home medical care, whether it's diagnosis or self-assessment, all the things you can do now that you don't have to go to the doctor. The doctor can come to you and you can get 15 to 30 points of analysis done at home. Yeah. So from a materials perspective, any aha moments, anything that's caught your eye? Well, thinking about uh, some of these little AI bots, the thing you're seeing a lot is, of course, ShyTech, which has been around. But it's the, it's the thoughtfulness in how a designer is trying to share information with you. So if it's a backlit translucent display that can just be soft and frosted when it's off, or do I want it to be shiny? How do I handle the reflections? So then am I, am I putting really high res imagery on it? I need to show somebody some really detailed data? Right. Or is it just like eyes blinking? Right. And if it's eyes blinking, I can hide that when it's off. So I'm seeing a lot of transparent, translucent materials, almost like a throwback to the 2000 when plastic had to be, everything went clear, right? The whole Apple uh, colored IMAX yep, and, yep. and, you know, the Harman Kardon speakers that were really hot when I was in design school in 2000. Any insights as far as emerging color trends? I mean, there was a period where black and white was king and everything else was dirt. Are we past that? Are we still there? Anything new? Um, I would definitely say, and this was a conversation uh, some of us were having last night even, was that OEMs are presenting a bespoke invented material. So it's not traditional. You can't immediately understand what it is. And you have to almost investigate what are they saying. So as a designer, I'm just looking at the sheen or the texture or uh, what it looks like right. is what's gonna draw my attention first, but now I don't even know what that's made out of. <laughs> and they've made up a name. Right. So I'm trying to say, I don't even know what this name means, so can I read it in the description? How sustainable is it? Uh, is it reuse, recycled material, post-consumer? It's just, it's everywhere. And it's kind of exciting for OEMs to be stepping into that. We are going to have to invent a material and working obviously with somebody like yourself would, would be the, the route to go to do that. Um, but it still has to look good. Yeah. It has to be cool, it has to have a nice texture, it has to achieve what you're trying to do. Very, very insightful. Uh, closing thoughts, anything else? Anything we haven't touched upon? Anything that uh, you feel uh, industrial designers should be aware of? Um, I just think as designers, as obviously AI is the hot topic, we need to make sure that we're working with a team and a marketing agency that's telling a story that we're not AI washing. So, hey, I, I've been coming to CES probably eight out of the last 10 years, mm -hmm. and a decade ago it was just the word smart. Smart hairbrushes and, and you know, ridiculous products all of a sudden got coined smart when it had a sensor in it. Right. And now that the sensor can tell you something, all of a sudden we're saying it's an AI oh. product. So I'm seeing products that I saw the exact same product three years ago. It doesn't really do that much more, but it has some level of processing intelligence. And now it's a very simple product, but it's, it's AI now. It's an AI powered XYZ, you name it. Right. And it's a little ridiculous at some point where you're like, okay, you're just basically replacing what you called smart five years ago. It's AI driven. Right. And I know that product is not really what we're talking about. When we talk about true AI powered technology, there's legitimate right. stuff out there, but it's, it's inevitable to proliferate across 
every product category from a lawnmower uh, to wearables, and some are and some aren't really AI driven, but now it's everywhere. So that AI washing is, is AI, uh, a little annoying. <laughs> <laughs> so AI washing, <laughs> certainly- It's, it's you, a term. <laughs> yeah, it used to be smart, now it's AI. Uh, but we have seen some true AI during CES. Maybe Johnny want to talk about that. I do. And actually, the one that sticks in my head is a beautiful combination of materials and AI. It's this cutting-edge bicycle safety system that was designed by a company called Velo. However, we've been talking with the people that made the components possible. And I want to stress this because I feel... Designers everywhere are going to get this. We're talking about the video and the, and the AI processing chip, which comes from Halo, and we're talking about the um, the guts, if you will, of the of the computer, which is being cooled not by a traditional metal heatsink, but by thermally conductive polycarbonate. Wow! Which not only takes the heat away, but it also blocks potential um, contamination from dust water, and even vibration resistance. It's, it's a pretty smooth product. I think you guys are going to love it. Roll the tape. Let's go to Halo. So the wonderful thing here is Velo has created, uh, along with Hellbender and Covestro, a device that really can save lives and utilize AI in a really powerful way. So what this is is basically uh, a device that will sit under a bike seat, as you can tell, and alert a biker to oncoming uh, cars or other things that might come along and, and knock them off the bike. So this is utilizing, uh, as you can see here in the middle, uh, there's a camera, there's lights. So behind here is an a is uh, basically uh, a chipset and including AI processing. So our chip is called the Halo 8. It's a, basically a, a chip that offloads, or it handles the AI processing for things like detecting objects, um, detecting a car, detecting something that's coming up behind a bike, uh, being able to tell which direction this object's going, and ultimately to alert the user that, hey, there's a problem behind you. And so the way this integrates with, um, so this is the main system, this integrates with a uh, smartphone application that the bike rider would then have there on their, you know, the front of their uh, handlebars. And through a system of, you know, audible alerts through the Velo device and on the phone, uh, the uh, the rider will get you know alerted that hey there's a car coming up behind you there's a car about to overtake you and there's different alerts for you know different states of you know the, the objects that are coming up behind you. What an amazing example from DC at Halo! Uh, I can only imagine the benefit of having an AI assistant below your seat, checking out for the traffic behind you. That's that's pretty crazy. It is, and you know the way that I'm spinning this in my head is they're combining cutting edge materials and they're combining AI. So the future looks super bright and I'm counting on our audience, the, the design professionals out there to actually blow our minds with the next great, amazing application. Before we go though, maybe we need to give them just a little snippet of what we heard from Eben at Raspberry Pi. I thought it was super insightful. Eben Upton is the CEO of Raspberry Pi, who has rolled out 56 million small, low footprint computers out in the world. Please, Roll the tape. I think they're gonna love this. You, if you were at CES in 2019, 2020, what you'd see is enormous numbers of Raspberry Pis out there on the floor, being used for prototyping, being yep. used as in test harnesses, being used for prototyping products. The big thing that's changed since then is there are even more Raspberry Pis out there and they're being used in production. Right? Exactly. So what we're seeing is this evolution, particularly, I think this is a lot of this is driven by Compute Module 4. Mm -hmm. um, you're seeing people actually going, and that's really the aspiration. Yeah, we're, we don't want to sell. Yeah, well, we, we, want to be, we want to be helpful, right? So we want, to, we want people to use Raspberry Pis for whatever they want to use Raspberry Pis for. But our aspiration is that people stay with us, not just for prototyping, but all the way through to production. And this is the CES where you see that's really starting to happen. Exactly. It's enabling people to deploy intelligence into the world at a much higher 
higher density than you could do with higher cost legacy platforms. That's super exciting. On the edge. Yeah, and on the edge. And you know, we are, you know, naturally it's like it's nice to go win sockets. The idea of winning sockets is great. Um, in practice, what we're doing because of the price performance point, we're creating sockets. We're creating opportunities to do compute, positive ROI opportunities to do compute. If you, you know, two ways to the two ways to win an ROI argument, right? Yep. You can increase the return or you can reduce the investment. If you reduce the investment, you vastly increase even, even a little bit reduction in the investment vastly increase, and you, you know, the capital investment and the yeah. running cost, yeah. um, you know, you vastly increase the number of available sockets. And so we're creating these sockets and we're taking these sockets and it's super exciting. I have been a big fan of Raspberry uh, Pi since decade. The beginning. Or so, so it was so amazing to see Eben live uh, up close and personal. John. Eben had so many awesome comments and there is a video dedicated to Raspberry Pi, if you're interested to hear them. The thing that stuck in my head was what we just played. Raspberry Pi has gone from test harnesses to actual applications. It's finding its way into actual bona fide applications out there that you can buy. So in my mind, what I said before, you got materials and you got hardware, chips, boards, and you have AI. And that's like the magic brew that designers need to harness to just come up with mind-blowing stuff. If you missed any of the videos and meetings around the crazy gadgets or thinkers we met at CES, go to YouTube channel CES 2024 playlist to kind of wrap up on all the latest. Hope to see you again next year. That's what we're going to do. Bye-bye. See ya.